on Zoom, it's not showing as connected. Okay, if you want to dial back in, that would be awesome. Okay, I'll keep my finger close to the mute so that we don't have that feedback loop. Uh, in the meantime, in the chat, I've posted the notes for today's call and agenda. Thank you so much for adding your names and contact information. We've got a slide deck prepared for today's uh, demonstration that will kick off the meeting, and I've shared that link in the notes. I'll share it here in the Zoom as well. Enter your participant ID followed by you are in the meeting now. Hey, I think the audio works. Morning, afternoon, or evening. Early morning. Hey, Crossy. Early morning? Just five this time of the year. Awesome. All right, 10 5. Welcome to the CA Working Group call. Uh, these calls are held every second Tuesday and fourth Tuesday. And uh, you're welcome to take a look at the CNCF public events calendar. That's a handy way to copy CNCF public events to your own personal calendar. Do that for my Google Calendar to keep track of this working group as well as the other groups that are doing cool things. I think we can get started as I see names that I was that I was expecting to see. Taylor, if you'd like to start your screen share. Sure. That will give a visual of the slides. Yeah. For those not following along on Google slides. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Share the screen. And I'm not sure what's showing. Do you all see? No. It's just black screen for me. Okay. Give me just a moment. Um, Reshare. A different one. It's black screen for me too. Um, I have a backup. Okay, so you're going to see me join a second time. Okay. Can you, are you able to stop the other screen share, Lucina? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Oh, I see it now. I couldn't, it was actually completely black. There we go. Sorry, I couldn't even stop it on the computer. Um, now I'm good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And here we go. Start that screen. 
screen share again. Let me know if you can see it this time. Y'all good? Okay, great. Sorry about that. Actually switched computers. I don't know what's happening with the other one. I'll debug that later. So um, let's get back here to the top. I think for some of y'all, this is probably a first time to um, see the CrossPod um, CI project. Some of y'all um, on the, the thread for Prometheus have looked at some things before. Give a little bit of an overview on that. Um, we'll go ahead and go through our, where we are. There's been a lot of changes in the last um, several months, and some of y'all are brand new. And talk a little bit about um, how to integrate with the project. It's one of the goals here. So, as Lucina said, this we made on this CI working group twice monthly. Let's scoot along here. And some of the folks on the team doing the did this last release. So why aren't, are we here? Um, CNCF has a lot of projects, as y'all know, like Prometheus, and it's growing every month. A lot of projects and a lot of clouds coming on. And the goal is to test the interoperability between all the projects and get the results on how they work on as many cloud providers as possible. So cross-cloud CI project, that's the goal um, of building this out. We have a few of the people that founded, the, um, founded this project on the call right now, in fact, um, Hippie Hacker and Denver. The project consists of a testing system. So this would include some of the stuff that you may be familiar with, like CI the status repository server and a dashboard. The testing system has the build components, that's your traditional CI stuff and other parts. The cross-cloud provisioning, so provisioning Kubernetes on all the cloud providers uh, across the project, which does app deployments. And then these parts together uh, validate um, how the projects work, doing tests for stable and head across all the cloud providers. And then we collect all those results and we're going to show them on a dashboard. We have a goal in the CrossCloud CI project of targeting all the projects. Um, what's live right now on CNCF CI is Kubernetes, Prometheus, Linkerd, and Cordinas will be releasing FluentD uh, soon and we have a few others in the works. Likewise, for clouds, um, we'd like to target all public, bare metal, and private clouds. We have AWS, Google GC, GK packet uh, for bare metal, and Azure. We have Bluemix uh, ready in testing, ready to go real soon, and we're working on OpenStack. So we recently had a release of the dashboard for CNCF, and uh, we actually have another one coming up here um, that we'll go over some of those. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that dashboard so we can take a look and then kind of work our way backwards. So right here we have the CNCF uh, dashboard. Let me know if y'all um, aren't able to see anything on the screen. So this dashboard is showing the status from, from builds, from app deployments, E to E test, and the Kubernetes provisioning on all the clouds based on the upstream commits. So when I go through here, you can see this was a Kubernetes 181 commit or a Prometheus uh, commit on master, so the head release. And then we take the builds and go through deploying those to each one of the cloud providers. Um, we can see there's right now there's some upstream issues with uh, Google. These are actually some account issues. We're increasing quota. 
Um, some of these, though, could be right now we have successful builds, but if we had a maybe an upstream poor DNS issue, then we would see that as we come through here. <clears throat> We've one of the recent items, I guess, that we're just about to um, just releasing in the last few days would be this footer. So a small thing, but something been asked for. So where did, what's the back project? So these are your standard things going to the GitHub cross cloud. So this is the actual org for the cross cloud CI project, and then all the different components that make that up for um, how the whole thing works. We one other item we were asked for to add was a prominent where do we report bugs on all of these so this, the main focus would be going into the cross CI org and adding issues there unless it's specific to a subcomponent. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and see how some of this runs. Normally this is running uh, every daily for CNCS, the CNCS CI it is going to go through and do builds and check the status of whatever is currently available. Uh, we actually pushed a few things out for uh, fixes on projects, and so it was run recently. I'd like to show doing an actual app deployment. So what I'm going to do is go to our staging environment, which will look very similar. See how this is. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and start a deployment over here. So, just a little command line that connects to the back end system so I can get that started and go back over here. I'm going to go to the back end system. I had all these tabs ready on the other computer, but I'll reload them here. <clears throat> so we can see on cross project, which I mentioned earlier, which is the app deployment component for the testing system, we can see that a bunch of jobs got kicked off. These are pipelines for doing the app deployments. And if we go back and look at the dashboard, we can see uh, here's Prometheus getting um, deployed on some of these clouds. Um, it may not work on some of these where there were failures. This is it testing um, right now. But as these go through, we'll see some more. So let's go look a little bit more on what these parts are. And then we'll come back and check here in a bit. So the testing system, this is the build pipelines, it's per project. We can optionally use a project's build artifact. So if, if Prometheus has a CI system um, where artifacts are stored and usable by the public or potentially by us, we could pull those out or we build our own. So that was something uh, we were looking at earlier to go back to. Cloud provisioning pipeline, that's cross cloud. That's Kubernetes deployments to all the cloud providers. App deployment pipeline, that's cross project, which we were just looking at over here. And that's deploying the Prometheus and any other application onto those Kubernetes clusters or potentially some other environment. The build pipeline. So let's look at those stages. Um, again, your traditional stuff, compiling the binaries, E to E tests, and getting all of those things ready. Some stuff that's done a little bit differently is we'll take the E to E tests and we'll put those in a container and get those ready to deploy. We'll also pin, um, create a pinning configuration for all of the versions and information for the environment and the containers and make those available at different stages. So even if we're using an external um, system for the artifacts, we'll still create those pinnings so that we know 
what they are and we can use them in the next pipeline. So the cloud provisioning, again, this is Kubernetes provisioning. We'll collect all the pinnings from the builds of uh, Kubernetes and then deploy those to the cloud. And then we'll update the dashboard status patches as we're going along. So as Kubernetes is getting deployed, those will start saying running and we can look at the provisioning. And then we'll go to the app deployment stage once Kubernetes provisioning is done, those clusters are ready, which may have been done beforehand or may be available one. Otherwise, these can go consecutively. We use Helm charts to deploy each one of those projects. And then we'll deploy the E2E -E test containers, uh, similarly run those E2E -E tests. And then based on the results of each one of those stages, we'll be updating the dashboard status patch. So if anything fails, then it'll be marked as failed. We'll have a, the status patch will link back to the appropriate job if it passes, then it links back to the appropriate job for that. Let's go take a look real quick before we look into the tools. Let's see, I wanna to go to the staging environment again. Okay, so we can see like Linkerd on packet or master pass. Let's go ahead and take a look at that job. So we can see this deployment. These are the Helm charts going in here. We can go back and look at the pipeline itself. So here's some of those stages we talked about building any of the source for the pieces that need to uh, do the deployment for the actual app deploy. Uh, this is the app deploy we're just looking at, uh, running any end-to-end -end test for the actual, I did click, I'm just waiting on that to go through here. Hmm. Internet. Okay, well, each one of these jobs will be similar to what we just looked at on the, this again was the app deploy. The next job was the end-to-end -end test, and as we saw it, it went all the way through and passed. And then if we go back here, we can see more of these are starting to complete, like Prometheus on Azure looks good. Prometheus um, version 2.0 on AWS looks good. We could go through each of those. Any failures, we could suddenly look like this failure. Well, as we know on GC, it's probably not going to work because it failed on the provisioning stage. But if it was a failure for, say, a Prometheus specific thing, we could look in at that. So, some of the technology behind this. We're just looking at GitLab. I'm going to move the Zoom thing here. So, GitLab is one of the main components right now that we're using. And GitLab, if you're not familiar with it, it's a unified CI CD platform. It provides runners, the ability to do builds, um, your normal jobs. It also does mirroring of the Git repos so that we can do triggers on those sort of things. For the provisioning, we're using Terraform cloud in it, and then we do custom Kubernetes configuration for each cloud, um, enabling as to set various flags. The app deployment helm, as well as E2E -E test, and then hopefully working as, as much as possible with upstream projects like Prometheus to build those E2E -E tests and then we can containerize them. The dashboard, so we were referring to that as two parts. There's the status repository, that's where we're saying the backend API. That's Elixir and Erlang allows us to have high performance uh, for any clients, multiple clients talking to the one API. Uh, the front end that we were showing is Vue.js is the primary. And let's go back and take a quick look, see how that looks on staging. So we, it looks like we're mainly green on the available um, clouds that worked. And since Google was completely out here, that one did not go for us. Okay. So what's next? Um, we're in the midst of 
adding support for ONAP right now, and this is their specifically their service orchestrator. And we're doing an integration with their CI system. So we're actually using their build artifacts and using their test results from their CI system to update on the build status batch. And then we'll be doing deploys of those artifacts to Kubernetes. And that's in progress right now. Um, the Google side, just real quick, I mentioned earlier, increasing some quota around that for the account that we have right now. So that can be re-enabled. Um, we have IBM Cloud, the Bluemix side um, is close to being released. We, that should be real soon. And then OpenStack, we're in development, finishing that out. FluentD, as I said before, and we'll be enabling and testing. Oops. We'll be enabling Kubernetes uh, newest 1.9 release. Quick mock-up that y'all can see on some of those things we're adding. We're going to be continuing collaboration. This is the ONAP integration. So we're working with Shay from Cloudify, at Chris Hodge from OpenStack, Prometheus, and y'all with uh, the EDE test. Happy to be doing that. And we have some other demos coming up that we're going to be doing and some of the events that we're attending. So next CI working group is the 27th Mobile World Congress end of this month. And in March, we're gonna be attending ONS and there's a face-to-face -face right before that that we'll be going to and then KubeCon in May. Okay, so is there any questions? Happy to go back through any of those items. Uh, maybe if you show the, the GitHub uh, repo for Prometheus, the one that is doing for Prometheus. Sure. Because I think this is the one we will use to um, open issues and start the discussions, I assume, right? Um, as far as E to E test, is that what you're referring to? The E to E well, test for Prometheus? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we'll probably use, um, for that specific one, we may want to switch to a, tick, a new ticket that's focused on just the um, adding E to E test and improving what we have. Pretty minimal. I think I just clicked on the wrong place. Let me go down here. Port bag, go to issues. I think we have one. Yep. So this ticket right here, ticket seven. Can you add that ticket to the chat, Lucina? Have you had a chance to look at uh, what we have on the uh, uh, prom bench, the Prometheus benchmarking? The one that um, Fabian did? I haven't. Um, I think the last thing that we had reviewed was when we were looking at this um, CI slash cluster needs, and it was kind of the overview. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, so I think um, what our most, most urgent need is, is um, some sort of way to automatically run performance tests um, because Prometheus is so highly optimized in places that it's super easy to do a mistake and ruin the whole performance tuning. Um, so we're looking to somehow automate uh, that. And the PromBench um, tool that we have there is basically what we've been doing manually um, but it's yeah. a lot of work to do that every time. So we were hoping to somehow integrate this with our, with your efforts. Okay.
because the general setup is uh, very similar to what you're already doing, if I understood correctly. We just set up the Kubernetes cluster uh, and put um, some resources in there and uh, let Prometheus run for some time and see, see how it goes. We even have dashboards and all the things uh, to do all of this. Um, we basically just need the automated uh, Kubernetes setup uh, with enough resources. Right now, we usually do something like a 10 node cluster with, I, I don't know, I, I would have to look up what the actual resources are, but we then run some 500 pods um, that expose metrics and um, see how Prometheus does with scraping those. Okay. And that sounds good. So right now, um, the test results that we're seeing here, these would be more of um, functionality end-to-end -end test versus performance. Although you, I understand we can think performance, you, you do need some capability on that. Um, so trying to see that where the overlap is. Makes sense. Actually, uh, I have to run, um, but the others uh, know just as well as I do. Uh, sorry about that. No problem. Okay, so yeah, thank you for, for the presentation. Absolutely. Is there any yeah. other from, I guess, anyone else on the Prometheus team um, questions or comments on the end to end test? I guess more general end to end test. Right now, we're looking at ensuring functionality on Kubernetes and each build essentially uh, works. I think we'll need to look more into the performance since we have the, we're doing a large set, but we can look at that, how that would fit into this. Uh, right now we want to make sure we cover all the functionality. Or yeah, is that, there that any one, other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, well, my, 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 quest, my main question was how do we, uh, basically work on this thing together. I mean, I don't see any specific uh, GitHub um, repo or any separate project where we can collaborate. How do we ask questions and how do we work together on this thing? Okay. Sure. So, um, in the CrossCloud CI org, um, are y'all able to see my screen? Yeah. Coming up, just spinning for me right now. That's not what I'm showing. I'm clicking on cross cloud CI. There we go. Okay, so the two primary um, parts would be on build and on. How, how do we build and making sure that builds are working fine if you don't have an artifact so that you can provide? And then the next would be EDE test. So <clears throat> the, the builds, how we're building Prometheus is in a Prometheus dash configuration repository. And is that showing for y'all? Yeah, it yeah. Like it's delayed. Okay, uh, yeah. so I'm in this we Prometheus configuration. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure why the Zoom screen's uh, delayed, but okay. So this repository here, it has the information for doing the builds and um, for running GitLab and pulling in all the different parts that we're using for the test. So we have these GitLab CI YAML files. This would be like Travis CI or Circle CI, anything else, describing how to build the different parts. So this would be one area if, if this is something where Prometheus team says, hey, we can help with making sure that it builds successfully or we, we should really add another component. So this would be one area. And then the other area would be the actual end-to-end -end test. And the end-to-end -end test, what we try to do is we'll take an upstream test. So an example would be, and Denver, if you have any thoughts on this, uh, speak up, but um, for DNS or 
Kubernetes. It's taken a while to load for some reason on my internet here, but Core DNS um, has some test um, functionality under here, and we have instructions on here's how we can run the specific end to end test. Uh, Kubernetes has end to end tests as well that they could run specifically for. Uh, testing the pods besides the full conformance test. So if we're doing like an app test or something, they also have a, there's cube, the cube DNS test. So if we plug in for DNS. So what we could do with you would be defining what are, what are end to end tests to test all the functionality on Prometheus that's reasonable um, for running on here. And then where would you want that? So if we're looking on, maybe you have a Prometheus stash test repo, or maybe you say, we want to put it inside of the main Prometheus Prometheus repo, and you have something in here, and then here's how we would run those specific tests. Not the unit test for builds, but actual end-to-end -end tests that are doing that. Um, we've sometimes built some smoke tests that will run for a project. You know the test you know what should, how it should be working for Prometheus. So we, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time trying to do that ourselves, if you can help with that. It should be similar to what you're doing with the benchmark, except for right now we're not looking at like a large set for performance. We want to test all the functionality. Yeah, thank you. Well, Connor, who, uh, Connor is on the call. Um, He's on the call as well, and he started working on some end-to-end -to -end tests for the service discovery. So maybe this will be a, a good um, uh, test run to see if this can be added to the tests that Prometheus does. Um, I think um, he wanted um, he wanted to show a short demo, but I'm not sure if he's he had time to prepare it for today. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I got back from Paris last night, like two a.m. But <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've been working on. Um, I stood up a Jenkins server that basically set up for these service discovery tests with Prometheus. So I've set up a few examples, like with EC2. So we throw a slave out there on EC2 and see if the Prometheus service discovery is working with that for a PR that comes in on Prometheus and things like that. Um, I wasn't actually aware, to be honest, that the CNCF had this continuous integration uh, set up. So I'm not sure if it is worth continuing down the road I was continuing, but maybe some of those tests I've written could be integrated with, with what you guys have because we are lacking service discovery tests and it's an area we want to cover. So, yeah, I can drop links in yeah. to the uh, Jenkins server of the tests into the chat actually, which might be abuse here. Yeah, that sounds like a good match for this ticket um, seven. So the end-to-end -end test that we're trying to run to show display the results for CNCF, um, it seems like a uh, service discovery for Prometheus is a good choice. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, I've, it's a funny I have a few examples sort of thrown up now at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a working process and I guess the kind of response from the rest of Prometheus developers was quite quiet, but um, yeah, if it fits in, I guess, then happy days. So what, what we need to do is find out how to reuse what you have already done and, and try to fit in this CI system, if I understand correctly. Yeah, I think so. I guess yeah, I need to have I think a... that... Sorry, go ahead. I think that's exactly what we we want to do, and it sounds like the service every test will work. So, what what I think would be a good idea is to um, if if y'all want to look at something that would be a standard way of where you could put it in in Prometheus for running those tests outside of the system. So, what are the requirements to run the test? What are you expecting, and then um, the instructions for running this. So if we can figure that out, then we'll be able to build the containers and run the end-to-end -end test. And we can discuss a little bit about um, 
once you've figured some of that out, how do we actually put them in containers? What are the expectations in our environment? Yeah, I, I can definitely, um, if you give me those questions, I can definitely uh, chalk up answers to them. I guess it, it depends on each test what what's required because yeah, the requirements will be different for, say, your test on your EC2. And then if you're testing, say, something like Zookeeper, it'll be different. But um, yeah, basically a box that can, a container that has Go and that can build Prometheus and reach out to those services. But um, yeah, I can, I can write up a more detailed sort of document on what we need if you give me those questions. Okay. And so are you referring to running it directly on EC2 versus in a Kubernetes cluster? Uh, directly on EC2. I haven't done anything for Kubernetes yet. Okay. So right now what we're targeting is, um, and what you're, we're seeing with Prometheus here, um, I'll just go back to that. So this is Prometheus deployed on Kubernetes which is, so right here we have Kubernetes, a cluster that's running on AWS, and then Prometheus was deployed onto Kubernetes that's on AWS. And that's what this was. So we actually deployed the different Prometheus components into the Kubernetes cluster. They're up and running. And then we will run the end-to-end -end test that's actually going against Prometheus running on top of Kubernetes. I don't know what Connor's tests look like, but I imagine it, it doesn't really matter for us where Prometheus is running as long as it could hit EC2 or something else. So. It, that's what it seems like. So if I guess, Connor, if, if you can go through and define what you need just to run the test, and that might be the first step, and when you feel comfortable with that, then we can look at containerizing those so that we could deploy just the container VDE test and see how that's going to run in the environment and what we may need to adjust. Yeah, sure. So that sounds good. Okay. And if you would like us to look at anything, um, if you can drop it in this issue seven, this is where we'll be working to try to collaborate and build the EDE test for Prometheus. Cool. Yeah, for, for us, the prompt benching is quite um, urgent, but it seems like this will not fit so easily. Yeah, I think that may be a, like, maybe a separate, almost a separate project or something to what y'all are needing there versus what this is. We could, I think that one might be more appropriate to, to continue in that other ticket, potentially. Okay. Prometheus ticket. Well, I think that was a good start. Now we know where to submit issues and we can take it from there, I guess. Awesome. Well, if, if there's not anything else, I think we might be able to call this a, an end of meeting. Got anything? Nope. Any other questions or comments? Awesome. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Okay, bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye everyone. See y'all at the next meeting. Cheers.